It's day three of our community game dev sprint, and today we focus mostly on the game loop. So let's take a look at what the actual game will be. The basic loop is pretty simple, and much of the UI elements of what's needed are included in the Neo FPS asset. So let's see what they look like. The player creates a profile, and then they can choose to enter into combat. Once they've done that, they select a loadout, and that loadout is dependent on the weapons available to them. They'll start the game with just two options, and as they play through, they'll find more and more options. The first level has three waves. The first wave is really super simple. It's particularly designed to introduce the player to the game. The enemies are really easy to destroy. They give off plenty of resources. The player should get their first weapon power up in that first wave. The player then completes all the other waves, eventually killing off the spawners. And uh, once they've done that, they go into a kind of a hub screen, which is where they can buy permanent upgrades. And so those permanent upgrades will survive death, unlike the other upgrades we'll come back to that in a moment so then they go into the next level and they keep repeating gathering upgrades as they go eventually though they'll die at which point all of those temporary power-ups will be lost so there you have it it's a first person roguelike wave shooter so let's take a look at some of the changes in the last 24 hours during playtesting, I found quite an error. Um, if you were damaged and out of ammo, health. it would keep creating health for you. And you can see that happening here. I have Complete. no ammo, so it's creating me health because I'm below health. zero health, but I can't fight back because I have no ammo. So I needed to make some changes there. This actually took me a little bit of messing to make it work, but I got it to work in the end. Here we have the Nanobot Manager and it looks to see if it can prioritize ammo if it's low. If it's not particularly low, then it will go and do health, power-ups, and then ammo if you're not full or very nearly full. Now, each of these try commands or try methods do the same thing, but they're working on different kinds of recipe. So we have the health recipe. Let me just close that now. So you have the health recipe and the power-up recipes are almost identical. The ammo recipe is a little different because you want it to behave different depending on the amount of ammo you have available. So you pass in a minimum amount, which is a percentage of the maximum that you can carry at any one time. And then it tests against that as well as trying to run the recipe itself. All right, so here I am. I'm injured and I have no ammo. So this is going to be picked up and it builds ammo straight away. Complete. Once I've got ammo, though, it's health. going to start building health, you see? Excellent. Complete. Now, you might have noticed in that footage that the resources and the ammo was being pulled towards the player. This is something that we implemented because it was getting a little bit fussy trying to get around and pick up those things. And we figured, well, let's give the player a magnet and then that can have upgrades. So here I am uh, just writing the code here. Let's actually skip to the completed code and look at how it works. So the code is pretty simple, really. You've got two parameters, a range and a speed, and they set how far the magnet will work and how fast it will pull things in, and those can be upgraded later. You can skip over those internal parameters because they'll come up in the update here. Um, we then say, OK, if we've got any existing targets, let's make sure that none of them have, been, have become null for any reason, remove them if they have, and if they haven't, then let's pull them in at the appropriate speed. Great, easy enough. And then this is where we just got a bit of a performance optimization. Um, we set a frequency of scans, which enables us to minimize how often we're doing this rather expensive physics overlap sphere. When we do that, though, we go through and we look for pickups that we want to pull in and uh, we add them to the targets. And that's it. Once it's seen them, it will keep I'm pulling them in around. until you actually collect them. Complete. So it's exciting times now because we're getting to the point of having almost a complete game loop. And that means it's time to start balancing. And the first thing that we noticed was it was damn hard to collect resources. Even with that magnet pulling them in, there just weren't enough being dropped. Fortunately, balancing the application of resources is super easy because we have this resource drop chance inside of our enemy AI. So we can just go through each of the AIs and increase that. But we can also do something else. We can also increase the um, quantity of resources that are being dropped. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm basically doubling the amount of resources that are dropped each time. 
And that should result in the player getting plenty of resources, as it says in the design doc. And that certainly did the job. We got plenty of resources being dropped, but it did expose another problem. If you look here, we have some of the caltrops and they're moving so quickly you can't actually get away from them. That's easily fixed too, because there's a speed multiplier inside of the enemy controller. And this is the game as it is now. I'm just going to talk you through a, a, a full gameplay here. So you start off nice and sedate, easy enemies. They're dropping a lot of art of uh, resources. Just pick them off. You can even take your time so that you make sure you get the resources. Once you grab those resources, then you're starting to build your ammo and so on. But all the time you're doing that, the other spawner is building more and more uh, enemies. And we're on the second wave now. So you've got some of these caltrops, which are much harder to hit. Uh, well, much harder to kill as well as hit. And so you start picking those off. But once they get close to you, they start charging you and it gets a bit pressured. So you have to step back a little bit. Breathe, take your time, get healed because you just got hit. Make sure you're not running out of ammo or at least stay still long enough for the ammo to make its way to you. But now you've got tons of resources, but it's all by the, the um, spawner. So it's not a great place. And you've got this new enemy coming out that's probably harder to kill. You don't know yet. But good news, you've got so many resources, you have a new weapon now. And look at that, you can take these big guys out they're called bolts quite easily. So picking them off one by one, but then the caltrops come in and they start getting close to you again. So it's time to start running. But now you can actually get away from them. Maybe you're going to hit them, but no, we'll go with the pistol. But oh, I forgot to load it. Always my problem in FPS games. Um, so eventually you'll be able to take these two out. And the wave will have been uh, reducing now. A bit of a bug here on those. I've fixed that now. It's the uh, collider was wrong. Uh, but now you're just picking off the last few. So it's now just about staying alive long enough to get rid of them so that you can kill off the spawner. One of the first things that we want to do is get the levels to be, well, decent levels. These are just terrible at the moment loads of open space and so on but ocular malice has been working on a level generator and here's some stills of the work that he's been doing we're expecting to get that in in a day or two we've also had chris from neo fps he's built in a load of additional character abilities things like grappling hooks and jetpacks and so on so we're going to get verticality into this it's great fun so that's it for today. Remember, this is a community project. All the code is open source, with the exception of Neo FPS, which is a paid asset. It's on 50% off right now. But you can get involved with modeling and things like that, even without Neo FPS. We need your help. Come join us. But if you just want to take the code and learn from it, links are in the description. Subscribe to get updates on this. We're going to be working on it for at least another nine days, I think it is. No, six days. Um, so why not try it out? Why not help us build it? See you soon.